Hey YouTube, it's Mark here. Just going to bring you a short video this evening. I hope it's going to be short. Um, you've probably seen from the title that I've written, uh, Sexual Immorality versus Fornication. Um, I'll just give you a very quick background on this video. I listen to some good preaching um, as much as I can. Um, and one of the words that came up in this preaching was fornication. I think the, the guy was preaching from 1 Corinthians, if I recall. And it came up and I just thought to myself, oh, you know, I need to just take a look at this. And it was just egging me on to take a look at it. And um, so I took a look at it. And just natural curiosity always drives me to checking out the perversions that are out there. Um, the satanic corruptions of, of Bibles, lowercase b's that are out there. <coughs> and um, I noticed very quickly, uh, without really any effort, to be honest, that the word fornication was being replaced by the words sexual immorality. Um, and I find this a fascinating changeover. And I just wanted to share some quick thoughts with you on this one. In that fornication is a defined word, and we know what it means. It's very specific. You can't argue against it, because fornication is the act of premarital sex. That's why you hear when preachers are talking about people living in fornication or fornicating, it's premarital sex. They're just shacked up, no intention of getting married, and they're just doing um, something that defiles them, ultimately. Uh, we read in 1 Corinthians 6.13 that the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. We read in 1 Corinthians 6.18 that we're supposed to flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. We're also reminded in 1 Corinthians 7.2, nevertheless to avoid fornication. Let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. Interesting, don't you think? Interesting. The word fornication, or fornications, appears 35 times, uh, or in 35 verses, for a total of 39 instances. It appears in the Old Testament, and we see that uh, portrayed in the, sort of the, the way that the nation acts. But in the New Testament, it's pretty clear what it really means. Uh, it's, it's to do completely with premarital sex. That's why you see it next to something like adultery, uh, the act of doing uh, extramarital uh, sex but uh, fornication premarital sex pretty straightforward so if you're a boyfriend and a girlfriend you're not married and you're doing that you're fornicating that's just basically what's going on and um but i find it very very interesting that these new corrupted perversions are saying sexual immorality instead of fornication and there are two reasons that i uh, find that interesting one that sexual immorality is a very relative uh word or collection of words um, and also it's reader defined which I'm going to cover and two the very act of changing it for sexual immorality eliminates fornication and that is extremely interesting so let's just quickly explore that word sexual immorality um, as I said it's a relative word and it's reader defined so basically what I mean by that is if you were interviewing a group of people on the street um, their version of sexual immorality would be, would be completely different between them. You put them all in a little pod, you know, one person in a pod, you interview them, each asking the same questions and saying to them, what do you think sexual immorality is? You'd get a different answer from all of them. And you would. It's a fact. It's an absolute fact. You know, say, for example, one of your, the first person you interviewed was an Amish woman, for example. What do you think her definition would be? And then the guy at the very end, uh, you know, uh, a convicted rapist or something, you know, what's your definition of sexual immorality? Do you see what I'm getting at here, guys? It's, it's a relative word and it's reader defined. The reader can read what they want into it. And I will bet you anything, <laughs> and maybe I shouldn't be saying that, but I will bet that anybody reading um, these newer perversions that, that come across the word sexual immorality... They wouldn't think of fornication, I can tell you that, definitely wouldn't think about it. They would go, oh, well, you know, it's this, that, and this, that, some, something taboo or something, something deviant. But they wouldn't go, oh, well, that's premarital sex. You might get one or two that would consider it in there, but it's a bundle offer in there. Sexual immorality, oh, it must be this, that, this, that, and this. 
They wouldn't stop at one. It'd be a number of things. The Bible's clear on this, though. It's fornication, not sexual immorality. So they removed this, and as I said, in point two, um, they remove it, change it for sexual immorality, and what they've ultimately done is just remove fornication full stop. Replace it with something else that's just up in the air, could be anything. Um, And now we don't have fornication. So you can have couples going to church that are fornicating um, and they have a clear conscience. And they have a clear conscience because their little NIV or whatever they've got tells them it's all right. They go, well, you know, we love each other or we're engaged or whatever it might be. You're still fornicating and you should be convicted about that. Now, I don't speak from a holier than thou perspective. I struggled uh, with that um, and I give thanks to God that I got married as soon as I could do it um, because I was bothered by it. I was troubled by it and that's what it should do. But if I had a, a you know, a, a, a new corruption in my hands, I would go, well, you know, it's not really a problem. I don't have a problem with it. And see, that's the problem, guys. I don't have a problem with this. This is what I think it means. This is my understanding. Well, I believe. No, 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 no. What does it say in the Bible? What does it say? Flee fornication. The body is not for fornication. He that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, it's a problem. And I'm going to put some scripture. I've got some scripture here. I'm going to put some scripture in the the video link. Um, to just show you, just go and take a look. Go do a search for it, and you'll see the just how important this word is in the Bible. It's just hugely important. You can't replace it with sexual immorality, and expect to have a Christian know what what on earth they've got to do. You know, it's here for a reason. So um, yeah, I just wanted to bring this. Wanted to kind of keep it fairly short, to be honest. Um, and I would like to know, you know, what you guys think about this. What your thoughts are on fornication? If it's in here in the Bible. Um, and I would especially like to know your thoughts of fornication versus sexual immorality. As I said, personally, <laughs> almost reading into a word here, personally, I feel that sexual immorality is a very broad, very relative uh, collection of words, um, and it's very much really defined. People can read whatever they want into it. That's what I think. Could be wrong, happy to be you know, proven wrong, prove me with scripture if I'm wrong. Um, whereas fornication, very clear, very clear about that situation and, and what's wrong with it um, and what you need to do to get right with that situation and, and just how you should be convicted. This is what I love about the King James Bible, guys, just the unsearchable riches. It's so much truth, so much truth, it's so powerful. You need to get the truth, you need to get real truth. Stop messing around with these ridiculous modern corruptions um, that will cripple you. So anyway, we'd just love to know what you think about um, this this issue, guys. Um, I hope it's a bit of interest to you, and uh, God bless. Thanks very much.